It's hard to really grasp how time-consuming ARK Survival Evolved can be, and as a YouTube channel that focuses on survival and completing games, you're inclined to spend even more time on these maps. I know one of the big questions you will have for me is whether we'd be playing this map and whether we'd be adding it to the community server. And I will admit I am surprised at the amount of creatures to feature from other paid DLCs. We have stuff here represented from Genesis Part 1, Aberration and Extinction. And to be honest it really does feel like a fully fledged map with a unique boss and some unique creatures. I certainly get the impression that a lot of folks will be picking this map up. And it does get my seal of approval at first glance. So I'm sure for myself and the channel at some point it warrants a closer look. I think the thing that surprises me most is the sheer amount of creatures that they've packed in from the other DLC maps this time round. My first impressions of the Lost Island are pretty positive. The jungle biomes are arguably some of the most detailed I've seen in any of the three DLC maps, and the Lost Island itself is huge. Its predecessor, the Crystal Isles, felt barren after Wildcard removed most of the creatures that made it feel like a more fantasy setting, and upon its release I overwhelmingly thought it was a step backwards from the modder's original vision. But with the Lost Island, being that only 10% of the map was complete when it was announced as this year's winner, I feel that Wildcard have done a fantastic job at making this jungle Aztec biome, and I think it's going to be a great addition to any community map. I'm yet to explore all the artifact caves, so to give this map a full review, I'd need to play it, live it, and experience it in full. That's just not possible in three days. And not to mention with all the art content that I'm making at the moment, it will be hard to get on there. I'm also currently playing another game called Real Life, and to be honest, the gameplay sucks. It does have good graphics, but it's totally pay to win. I feel more than anything that the YouTube algorithm wants me to make some more 100 days content, so I'm certainly aiming to have more of that content done next year. So I can only guess you've clicked on this video to see if the Lost Island is worth taking a look at yourself. And I think the answer is definitely yes, but at the same time, as much as I love the game, I'm going to criticise it as well. I felt like the creatures I was finding out there in the wild to be of a real low level, and I struggled to find the Ambergris location for those wishing to tame the Magmasaur. 24 hours after its release, some wild card have already patched out the issue, so you can now tame the Magmasaur on Sulphur. This only leads me to believe that Wildcard haven't tested it for themselves and fixed the issue by nerfing every other map. When it came to raising these creatures yourself, it's a shame because there was a unique taming method. On Genesis, it required you to enter the Lunar Biome. On Fjordor, it was a trip to the bottom of the ocean. It can't help feeling like Wildcard haven't tested some of their own spawns. And changing it so you can raise an egg on Sulphur a day after it released changes all the other maps at the same time. Again, the Megachelon is another surprise, and I'm yet to find any micro swarms of fish out there, so whether you can actually tame these is another question. Perhaps my biggest gripe with the whole map is the fog. This time round, the filter on the map is almost makes it unplayable. When the fog comes in, it really is a poor effect. Especially when you look at games like Valheim and you see how beautiful the weather can be on there. I'd personally not bother with fog or any rain if that's the best that Wildcard can throw out. It certainly doesn't help immerse you in the game, but all of that aside, I do think that it's worth a play. It's the first free DLC map to be introduced, with three new creatures and not just the one, and it's also the first map not to be delayed by Wildcard, so a thumbs up from myself for that one guys. The original map was inspired by Tamriel from Bethesda's Oblivion, but I feel it's been changed enough that I don't think Todd Howard will kick off on this one. Really, really big game world, and this is a cool visual way for us to, to keep track of it. And even though I felt the Dino Pificus was the last creature I'd want to tame back in July when it won the community vote, I have to admit it has grown on me. So all in all, for a free map, I will definitely recommend, and perhaps we'll be adding it onto the cluster, and featuring content on it sooner than I thought. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.